Hello, Custom Magic community. Welcome back to Custom Cards. I got a couple of requests for how to use Magic Set Editor, so I thought I would sort of go over the basics of that today. First up, you need to download the program. So head to magicsetteditor.boards.net, go to Additional Resources and MSE Downloads. Here you've got several options for packages you can download. Um, you got the basic package here, comes with everything you need to get started. You have the advanced one, which comes with a lot of frames. Um, You've got the mainframe one, which is, is the one it suggests. I think it just comes with a basic package, as well as some additional nice little um, templates from Cajun, who's one of the programmers on here. Um, but if you need additional templates, there's a lot of them available. Um, there are so many available here. Let me show you. Once you've downloaded it, you open up Magic Set Editor, create a new set, and... Mine takes a while to open because I have so many frames available. Um, so here we have Magic. You can you can choose which game you want. Um, so I've downloaded um, frames for Android Netrunner and Star Trek because I love those games. Um, but once you've chosen your game, probably we're doing Magic, um, then you pick a frame. So as I said, there are a lot of frames. And I do not need this many. I need to get rid of some of them so that it sort of clears up my system a bit. But um, all this does, just picking this, decides what new cards are going to default to, to being. So um, I could make them all default as vehicles, or probably just go with the basic style. That's generally what you're going to want, M15 style. And that doesn't mean that I cannot make a vehicle. So here we have the basic style. But if I want to make a vehicle, I just go to style, and I click on the vehicle frame, and now we have a vehicle. And you can see there's multiple different uh, fields on the card where I can input information. There's the name, there's the mana cost, here's the type line. I could either type out artifact or I could use the drop down artifact vehicle. I usually type it, I think it's faster, but. Um, and then down here, you got the rules text box, vigilance, crew three. Um, and notice how as soon as I put a space after crew, it populates with number and the rules text. Um, the number is telling me I need a number for crew to work properly, and obviously the reminder text tells you how the ability works. Now notice Vigilance also should have reminder text, but it doesn't, and that's just because basic abilities don't tend to get reminder text in expert level sets. But if you want to change that, you just press this reminder text button up here, it's the three dots. You can toggle it to add or remove text. Information on these abilities are based on a repository here in Keywords. So here we have pretty much all the keywords in Magic, um, and this is where it stores that information so that when you type champion uh, something, um, it can come up with this reminder text. And so you can create your own keywords to add. So let's say we want to add something called Wander. Um, we could go to Keywords. We could click Add New Keyword. And then this is the name for your ability. Um, it doesn't have any mechanical impact on the program. What does is matches. Um, so here you put the word that you want the program to trigger on seeing. So also put wonder. So when it sees the word wonder, uh, and we'll go with a number, um, then it will output your reminder text, which you can put here. So when this They'll go on permanence, um, could be creatures or non-creatures. So if you want to be able to have this uh, program tell which is which, you can put if has power toughness, then it outputs then it outputs the word creature. And if it doesn't have a power toughness box, then it outputs permanent. Um, so I'll show you that later. So when this thing enters the battlefield, you may reveal up to, and then let's put the parameter. So we'll have a number. We can put it as the, the numeral, or we can put it as words. Um, because it's not like damage or life or something. It's going to be words. Reveal up to number of land cards from your hand for each card revealed this way. Add one mana of any color. 
Now this ability is probably not good. It's not really meant to be good. It's just meant to illustrate here we have wander. And as soon as we hit space, it populates with a reminder text and it tells us it wants a number, so three. When this permanent enters the battlefield, you may reveal up to three land cards. Um, but once we give it a power and toughness box, when this creature enters the battlefield, so that's interesting. I don't know if you want it to say creature on a vehicle, but that's a niche case. Um, maybe there's a, a different function we can use now that vehicles exist. Okay, and then we have rarity. Um, got basic land, common, uncommon, rare, mythic, rare, special, which are like the uh, time shifted cards from Time Spiral. They were specials. Or we've got masterpiece. A masterpiece and mythic rare are pretty much the same uh, as far as the design of the symbol. However, they do have a slight difference in practice, which is. Let's say that's A, C. So generally, in a set, cards are sorted first by color and then by name. So um, if the cards are sorted by name, you can see we've mixed them up. So it's Mythic Rare Masterpiece, Mythic Rare Masterpiece, Mythic Rare Masterpiece. You can sort by rarity, and uh, it'll separate them out. Um, however, another difference with Masterpieces is they're automatically separated out. You, if you sort by the number in the set, um, you've got A, C, B, you've got all the Mythic Rares first, and then the mas Masterpieces start their own new numbering system. And that's because Masterpieces don't appear in the main numbering of a set. So generally, when you are sorting by set number, um, the collector's number on official Magic sets, uh, it's based on what color and card type the, the card is. So, um, for example, first you have colorless cards. If a card has no color, it goes first. Then you've got, I should say, if a card has no color and is not an artifact or a land, it goes first. So um, it's very niche. It doesn't really happen often. Then you get white cards, then blue cards, and then black cards. See, and then let's make a, let's make a few more. Red, no, 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 red, there we go, green, red, green, red, hybrid, green, and we'll want an artifact, and we'll want a land. So you can see first we have colorless, then we have a white card, and then a blue card, and then a black card. And then a red card. And this is moving them around automatically. I did not put them in these places. Um, so this is just how it defaults. Green, and then a gold card, and then hybrid cards, and then artifacts that are not colored. You can see this is a colored artifact, and it's up here. Um, so artifacts that have no color, and then lands, which lands intrinsically have no color. Um, so that's generally how uh, the number system works. However, if you want to sort them by other things, you sure can. Now, going with these um, mana symbols, how do you how do you make these mana symbols on cards? So the important things to know are W, U, B, R, and G. These are the main five mana symbols. Um, you need them to be capital, and you need them generally to be preceded by the word pay. Oops, pay and it turns them into their mana symbols. Or you can do add, or if they are followed by a colon or a comma, it'll automatically turn them into their mana symbols. Um, however, assuming that none of these things are, are what your card is doing, you can manually change these by going up here to this symbols button, click on it, and it just toggles them back and forth from their symbol. Yeah, other important ones to know are colorless is a C, Phyrexian mana is an H, for tap and untap you've got T and Q respectively, for snow S, and for variables you've got X, Y, and Z. So um, those are how you make various symbols, um, but one thing that you can do um, is if you want to make a hybrid, you know, uh, we got red and green. Intrinsically or automatically it makes a gold card, but if you want to make it a hybrid card, all you have to do is go between them and hit the slash button. Looks like this. You hit that while you're between two, it pushes them together, and now it's a red-green hybrid card. Now notice, 
Notice when I do that, the frame changes. Gold, and now it's a gradient. And that's because that's how those cards look. But if you want to change it, um, you can go click somewhere on the colored part of the frame, and you can change the defaults. You could, you could make it white and not red or green if you wanted. Or you could change the gradient instead of being, uh, here we are, instead of being left to right, red to green, you could, you can make it vertical. And if you wanted Phyrexian mana, you put H, and then the color that you want it, and then you put a, uh, and then you basically hybridize those um, by putting the slash between them. Okay, and then there are, um, there is a hidden field on this card, um, right between the field for the type line and the field for the rules box. Um, if you click right here, it will bring up a watermark menu. So this is a black card, I could give it a black watermark. Or maybe it is a Demir card. So I want to give it the Demir water park. Um, I can go to Guild Symbols, House Demir, and boom, it has a watermark. Um, so there's lots of options there. Um, you can also do the set symbol, which is kind of nice. Oh, speaking of set symbol, um, if you want to change your set symbol, you go to Set Info, and here it has the symbol. You click, double click to edit symbol, and you can you can play around with this. I'm going to be honest. I don't usually build these designs myself. What I do is I find a logo on the internet, I download it, and I go to File and open it in this. There we go. That's something anyway. And now, this is our set symbol, and it's also on the watermark as well. Now, um, there is a couple of other shortcuts that you should know, which are like, um, if you hit Shift and then the tilde button, um, it'll bring up card name, and if you hit Shift and 2, you know, it's, uh, so at, it brings up legend name. So what that means is uh, it's going to automatically replace this with whatever your card name is. So uh, maybe his name is Julian, King of Deceit, and he's a legendary creature. Oops. And now see, the card name has populated with Julian, King of Deceit, and the legend name has just gone with Julian. And that's because, generally, the first time that a legend refers to itself, it uses its full name, and then any time after, it uses uh, just its legend name, just the beginning. So, like, Arashi, the sky is under, and then Arashi. Uh, another shortcut is ETB. So, when Julian, King of Deceit... E T B turns into enters the battlefield. When Julian, King of Deceit, L L T B leaves the battlefield. Um, so those are some nice, helpful little uh, shortcuts to have so you're not typing out enters the battlefield all the time, which I still do. I forget to use this. And of course, uh, flavor text down here. Go dog. Um, so. Yeah, that's a basic overview of how to download and start using Magic Set Editor. Uh, it's definitely not everything, but I hope that this will help you. And if you ever have any questions about how to use the program, just drop them in comments on this video, and I will get back to you. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know what videos you would like to see in the future. We'll be back next Thursday.